This is one of the scenes from Walking Without Feet performance. Hi, I'm Hugh Tran from Australian Vietnamese Youth Media. I was asked by Vietnamese community to document this project. I caught up with the director after the project finished. I asked him about his original vision for the project. I originally kind of wanted a, a um, almost a soapy narrative structure sort of show where one guy is facing a crisis and the community pulls in to help and build him up for her and or maybe the, the community is picking on this him or her and he's got to kind of find the inner strength and really um, prove that uh, he's not disabled at all. Um, because a lot of the films that you see about people with disabilities, it really restricts what is a disability, what, what, how you classify someone with, who's disabled. Um, we tend to restrict itself to the physical uh, malfunction of the body. And I've got cerebral palsy and hearing impairment, but that doesn't restrict me from doing what I want to do. So in a way I wanted to show to the community and the young people and their families that these people are not sheltered, restricted, poor, impoverished, uh, war-stricken victims of, I don't know, napalm or something like that. And I was very impressed with Dominic because, um, you know, I felt that here is this um, Vietnamese young person who's grown up, um, you know, in, in South Australia with an Australian family and who is passionate about, you know, his Vietnamese background and also the Vietnamese community and also the fact that um, the Vietnamese community has not really acknowledged the issue of disability. Um, we, uh, we seem to um, treat it as if it's not there, so it's an invisible issue in our community. So I thought that, you know, this is timely that we should start addressing this issue. And um, Dominic was interested in um, setting up a uh, program for young adults with disabilities because he came across a uh, research report that was done by the Migrant Resource Centre in Footscray. Disabled.com to walking out of feet, man. Uh, it wasn't an overnight thing. I uh, one morning and think, oh dear, I need to change the title. No, it was um, through the process, um, I realised my original vision was to incorporate a lot of technology. But the participants didn't bring that to the group. Um, they didn't bring the, that technology because they didn't need it. Uh, the disability didn't need it. So, Disabled.com originally was supposed to incorporate computer uh, ideas and technology, but since the participant didn't have it, there's not much use having a title called Disabled.com because it's too misleading. So I extensively talked to my uh, fellow theatre practitioners. I talked to the VCA and over coffee and we, we decided to talk, call it um, Walking Without Feet. For me it wasn't so much um, what he did as long as you know the participants were empowered and that the end result was something that would you know inform the community about the needs and issues of, of you know Vietnamese young adults with disabilities and I think that Dominic achieved that quite well um, the range of activities that Dominic organised, um, you know, really made the participants bond, you know, got them to know one another, they became very involved, um, they participated and enjoyed themselves in all of the activities, um, the performances, um, all of the activities relating to the performances, they were, you know, they, 
they did their own music, they chose their own stories, they chose their costumes, etc. So they, they were involved throughout the process and to me that was fantastic. And the performance itself, that which was very um, well received and it was you know, watched by a lot of people, um, that was great. And it also uh, appeared on a couple of Vietnamese media, the mainstream media. So people were really aware of it. And I think the booklet itself is also quite informative about you know, the needs and issues of young adults with disabilities and, um, and the kind of things that they were involved with in the project. So I, I think that um, that really exposed to the Vietnamese community what young adults with disabilities can do can become involved in and can achieve. In order to create more materials for the project, Dominic took these young people to the zoo and Luna Park. He also got them to try out different workshops like painting, photography, karaoke and pottery. I think the photography really worked because that I mean that we didn't have to go to their house and capture what they do. In a sense, they did it themselves. And so we caught moments that we couldn't even, even think about. I mean, we couldn't do it. I mean, as an artist, we couldn't do that. But they did it, and they had really good um, shots of what their, their everyday life, which is what I wanted to discuss through dialogue, but we couldn't do that. Um, I think karaoke worked in two levels. We found that some participants didn't want to sing at all and very, very, very shy. And some were so keen and that was their way of showing their love or, through singing karaoke. And that, that was their way of communicating to people you know, artistically. And it's something that they felt really, really comfortable with comfortable with. Um, the pottery worked quite well uh, because that was something that required no thought. It was something that they can do and construct um, and we displayed it so it was good. Um, the painting worked well because we can use that on two fronts. We can use that as an exhibition as well as use it as part of the set for the theatre show, and it's also a way that the audience can relate to seeing something on, on, uh, on the wall, so that it creates discussion, and it's also a good way for the participants to go, look, oh, that's my painting, you like that, what do you think about my painting? <laughs> The zoo, uh, I know they've done plenty of those activities with their previous, their other programs, but I, as a director and artist, I really wanted to capture the really cute moments when the young people see this wild animal, and how do that? How do you think they would relate to that wild animal? And how would that wild animal, in a way, symbolise maybe? maybe the community um, experiences or expectations of what they want them to be. And also a way that um, maybe meeting this little cute little bunny rabbit from Africa, they can relate to it because they see themselves as this cute little bunny from Africa. Uh, um, yeah, so I kind of really wanted to capture on video really nice moments of joy and fear uh, and maybe going, oh wow, what's that? You know, I've never seen that animal. Or, that's funny, that animal is doing something really naughty. And they get a giggle out of it and they run off. And you know, all that sort of really nice moments that you get when one goes to the zoo. Good, 
Hi Andre is one of the disabled artists in the project. I met up with him three months after the project's complete. I asked Hai what it was like to be involved in this project. I found that uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, because they are good group, good people and get, give them opportunity to get out. And and um, watch them join. And that's what made me happy. Sự đây cũng là cái lần đầu tiên làm á. thấy cũng vui. Nó có một cái tính cách mà mình nghĩ là bên cạnh cuộc sống nó có những cái mặt khác á. Mà những mặt đó đó hồi nào giờ mình chưa có tham gia vào. Là bên cái phía nghệ thuật á. Kịch hay là này nọ đó. Thế nên bây giờ trong cái dịp tham gia chung với mấy em vậy thì cũng cảm thấy vui. Đó là một cái kinh nghiệm cũng tốt cho mình. Ừ. The experience that I have is actually uh, performing by myself on the stage. Especially rehearsal. That I have to stay in the hall and I scream out loud and which is uh, everyone walk past and they thought I've been tortured by Dom. I think if you look at the attitude of the young people, you know if they are going to go or not. If the young people are going, even though the number of them is not as big as we want. But the young people are going like this. Các em chỉ có mấy em đó mà nó vẫn tiếp tục nó, nó duy trì nó cho đến giờ chót như vậy thì mình thấy là như vậy là xét rồi mà không hiểu thì nó không hiểu chứ. Uh, one of my major difficulties was really about establishing the trust of the parents. Um, and that was because I was a total stranger. But it was also because I didn't speak Vietnamese and older Vietnamese tend to well, speak Vietnamese and the English is not so great. So I was really trying to conquer that language barrier. But um, through that we had to um, go to the families and the houses and really get to know them in their own environment. And through that I got the trust through not really talking to them but actually being there. And they get to know me for who I am. Dominic and I, um, we never worked together before, um, so this was really our first time that we got to work with each other um, on a project. And um, I guess because Dominic wasn't really based at the VCA Vic, he was based at the Footscray Community Arts Centre, um, I didn't really get to see Dominic a lot, but we did meet regularly, um, you know, to talk about how the project was going. Um, and also uh, sometimes he would pop into the uh, VCA Vic's office to do some work and he would also let me know of any issues or difficulties that he came across. I mean, I, um, I found our working relationship, you know, to be a positive one. I mean, at times it was um, a bit challenging because um, of the stress that Dominic was experiencing, um, the frustration that he was also experiencing, um, the change of plans that he had to accommodate um, and I guess for me um, that also translates to challenges for me in terms of how do I you know support Dominic and assist him to deal with these challenges that he were he was experiencing um, and um, I mean I, I didn't really find it negative I, I found it positive I, I found that um, you know, I got to understand Dominic more and because this was his first project, you know, um, he had a lot of pressure and uh, my role there was trying to be as supportive and understanding as possible. I don't know how well I did that, but that was how I interpreted my role. <laughs> Yeah.
I find them um, difficult to work with because they hide all the stories and uh, they very um, not um, what's it called uh, not very social social life or friendly willing to tell a story or prepare to help to tip on the story to make the story a bit better or or correct the uh, the culture, or um, they actually just, they just keep to themselves. Simple as that. That's how the way they brought up from Vietnam, I guess. But I would have thought they live in Australia. They would have learned know the way how to relieve and live the way the Australian live, but they still not. Ngay từ đầu mình đã làm với mấy em rồi đó, bây giờ mình rút ra đó, thì mấy em dĩ nhiên mấy em nó sẽ nó làm như nó mất một cái gì quen quen mà đã có với nó đó trong quá trình mà đã tập á, cho nên là khi đó thì mình nghĩ là mình làm chung với mấy em một phần mình nghĩ là vì để uh, hỗ trợ với mấy em đó, để mấy em nó làm cái chuyện đó một cách nó tự nhiên á, nó không có bị uh, kiểu mình nó sẽ lúng túng hay là nó sẽ quên hay là nó sẽ uh, giống như là uh, mấy em này thì mình hiểu là nó có một cái thói quen đã là cái gì quen với người nào người nào mà trong cái khung cảnh mà cái thứ tự là như vậy rồi đó mà có một cái gì xáo trộn cái là sẽ làm như tụi nó coi như là nó không còn nhớ gì nữa chứ có lẽ là vì cái lý do đó mình phải tham gia mua chung với mẹ. And for me, like I said, it is a challenge, but it has been a positive challenge, and it has it has had positive outcomes from my perspective. Um, the other challenge is really you know, engaging with the Vietnamese young people and their carers. And I think we did that really well. Um, I think we really, you know, got them out of their homes and, um, you know, got them involved in arts project, linking them up to various organisations like the VCA Vic, the Australian Vietnamese Youth Media, the Footscray Community Arts Centre, a place that, you know, Vietnamese people generally do not go to, especially Vietnamese people who have disability. What I learned also about myself was that I don't really have to pretend to be something that I am not, which is essentially what I'm saying is I don't have to pretend to know everything about being Vietnamese because that, that in itself, as I learned from this project, is very different from person to person. Um, and in a way, I've got a, I've, I've got a greater appreciation for the, the difficulties that the Vietnamese community has to face. I have a greater understanding that you can't have, you can't wave the magic wand, which is what, essentially what I tried to do with my grand pro idea, which basically the wave the magic wand and go bang, there you go, problem solved, issues out there, and everybody can go home and sleep nicely. It doesn't work like that, and community art cannot be like that. I think that's, um, and also the expectation of the VCO, I think they had overwhelmingly thought that I could, you know, somehow build these young people into superhuman beings. Uh, and so, and, but when it really came down to it, it's the individual relationship that I established and the community has, has established with these young people is that they feel much more in control and I feel like they can do stuff and they don't have to be scared. Uh, 
that can ask the parents uh, with confidence whether they want to uh, go to the movies with their friends by themselves, with just being with their friends. They don't have to have a guardian, so to speak, with them all the time. They can. This project enables them to feel valued, and and I think that that's what uh, we've accomplished in through this project. In the end, was really to give the young kids um, a sense of well, a, a sense of self and a sense of value, and I'm I'm glad that we accomplished that, and that's what we we achieved. If there's a another project coming up, um, how would you think that you do differently? Mm -hmm. Look. I mean, from my experience and um, upon reflection, um, I don't think I'll do anything differently. Um, it might be a different focus um, on a different issue or maybe we might try a different way of addressing the issue. But um, I think that um, I would work together with the same people. I would also have a support committee established to provide support to the project and to the workers. Um, I would also like to continue working with the Australian Vietnamese Youth Media because I think that um, arts, um, you know, an all arts medium is, is a fantastic and creative way of, you know, dealing with sensitive issues in our community um, because, because of its ability to be creative, it can also be effective. And so I think that I would continue the same approach that, that we've adopted. And I think that um, the approach that we adopted for this project is really a best practice model because it demonstrates partnerships, it demonstrates you know, support, it demonstrates empowerment, um, and you know, it also demonstrates um, how well you know, people could work together to address a very sensitive issue in the community. Well, if I did this project again, I would actually uh, really work with the community for a lot longer uh, before actually framing an idea of what the overall project was going to be like. So I get a greater understanding of where the community is coming from. Instead of me imposing what the community would be like to work with. Um, and I would actually would really would talk to the individual families a lot earlier than I did to start off with. So when it came to actually developing the workshops, it wouldn't be such a, uh, it wouldn't be so hard. The process would be a lot smoother. Um, also, I would actually um, rediscuss through that concentrated process with the support committee and with the VCA would to really kind of work out what they really, really want or what the community really, really wants. Because I think what we've done effectively is what the project initially started off with effectively was to come from two totally different angles. You have my artistic vision and you have the VCA vision. And Okay, we started kind of together, but in reality it wasn't. Uh, and there was a lot of, there was a clash between what the outcome, what the expected final product was going to be. And if we worked with that a lot longer, instead of just a three month process of running up the ground and stuff like that, we would have gone through a, a solid development stage and then a solid workshop stage and then a final product stage which would have, wouldn't have been the close six month time limit. I think it's best if it's community art to do it from a, a two year or three year basis. Um, I think that way it allow the young people and the community to have more valued input as well. And I think that's what I would have definitely would have done a lot differently.
So they, they were involved throughout the process and to me that was fantastic. And the performance itself, that which was very um, well received and it was you know, watched by a lot of people, um, that was great. And it also uh, appeared on a couple of Vietnamese media, the mainstream media. So people were really aware of it. And I think the booklet itself is also quite informative about, you know, the needs and issues of young adults with disabilities and, um, and the kind of things that they were involved with in the project. So I, I think that um, that really exposed to the Vietnamese community what young adults with disabilities can do can become involved in and can achieve. In order to create more materials for the project, Dominic took these young people to the zoo and Luna Park. He also got them to try out different workshops like painting, photography, karaoke and pottery. I think the photography really worked because that mean that we didn't have to go to their house and capture what they do. In a sense, they did it themselves. And so we caught moments that we couldn't even, even think about. I mean, we couldn't do it. I mean, as an artist, we couldn't do that. But they did it, and they had really good um, shots of what their, their everyday life, which is what I wanted to discuss through dialogue, but we couldn't do that. Um, I think karaoke worked in two levels. We found that some parties This is one of the scenes from Walking Without Feet performance. Hi, I'm Hugh Tran from Australian Vietnamese Youth Media. I was asked by Vietnamese community to document this project. I caught up with the director after the project finished. I asked him about his original vision for the project. I originally kind of wanted a, a um, almost a soapy narrative structure sort of show, where one guy is facing a crisis and the community pulls in to help and build him up for her and or maybe the, the community is picking on this him or her and he's got to kind of find the inner strength and really um, prove that uh, he's not disabled at all. Um, because a lot of the films that you see about people with disabilities it really restricts what is a disability, what, what, how you classify someone with, who's disabled. Um, we tend to restrict itself to the physical uh, malfunction of the body. And I've got cerebral palsy and hearing impairment, but that doesn't restrict me from doing what I want to do. So in a way, I wanted to show to the community and the need to change the title. No, it was um, through the process, um, I realised my original vision was to incorporate a lot of technology. But the participants didn't bring that to the group. Um, they didn't bring the, that technology because they didn't need it. Uh, the disability didn't need it. So Disabled.com originally was supposed to incorporate computer uh, ideas and technology. But things the participant didn't have it. There's not much use having a title called disabled.com because it's too misleading. So I extensively talked to my uh, fellow theatre practitioners. I talked to the BCA and over coffee and we, we decided to talk, call it um, walking without feet. For me, it wasn't so much um what he did as long as you know the participants were empowered and that the end result was something that would you know inform the community about the needs and issues of of you know Vietnamese young adults with disabilities and I think that Dominic achieved that quite well 
um, the range of activities that Dominic organised, um, you know, really made the participants bond, you know, got them to know one another. They became very involved. Um, they participated and enjoyed themselves in all of the activities. Um, the performances, um, all of the activities relating to the performances, they were, you know, they they did their own music, they chose their own stories, they chose their costumes, etc. The young people and their families, that these people are not sheltered, restricted, poor, impoverished, uh, war-stricken victims of, I don't know, napalm or something like that. And I was very impressed with Dominic because, um, you know, I felt that here is this um, Vietnamese young person who's grown up um, you know, in, our, in South Australia with an Australian family and who is passionate about, you know, his Vietnamese background and also the Vietnamese community and also the fact that um, the Vietnamese community has not really acknowledged the issue of disability. Um, we, uh, we seem to um, treat it as if it's not there, so it's an invisible issue in our community. So I thought that, you know, this is timely that we should start addressing this issue. And um, Dominic was interested in um, setting up a uh, program for young adults with disabilities because he came across a uh, research report that was done by the Migrant Resource Centre in Footscray. I'm Disabled.com into walking out our feet, man. Uh, it wasn't an overnight thing. I that one morning thing. Oh dear, this pinch didn't want to sing at all. I'm very, very, very shy. And some were so keen, and that was their way of showing their love or, through singing karaoke. And that that was their way of communicating to people you know, artistically. And it's something that they felt really, really comfortable with comfortable with. Um, the pottery worked quite well uh, because that was something that required no thought. It was something that they can do and construct um, and we displayed it so it was good. Um, the painting worked well because we can use that on two fronts. We can use that as an exhibition as well as use it as part of the set for the theatre show and it's also a way that the audience can relate to seeing something on on, uh, on the wall so that it creates discussion and it's also a good way for the participants to go look oh that's my painting you like that what do you think about my painting <laughs> The view. Uh, I know they've done plenty of those activities with their previous, their other programs, but I, as a director and artist, I really wanted to capture the really cute moments when the young people see this wild animal, and how do that? How do you think they would relate to that wild animal? 